At Hello Bromley, Happy Disability Pride. My name's Richard. I'm a stammering poet. I'm a disabled poet. This, this first one's a poem about labels. My advice about labels is wear what you feel comfortable with. But wear what you feel proud of. My labels have changed over time. But I'll read a few of them here now. As a stammerer, sometimes I can't say my name. Sometimes it's easier to say a label. But I can't say my name. I can't say my name. Who am I? Who am I? Past labels. Six foot six. Stammering. Asthmatic from West Prom. Prone to much depression. More recent names. Activist, advocate, engagement, poet, artist. I call myself disabled. I had person to disabled. I had poet to disabled. I had artist to disabled, disabled person, disabled poet, disabled artist, I can't say my name, who am I, who am I, thank you, this next one's called Conscripted, it's about my experience as a child, and when I was taken away from home, and made to become a resident in special school. Uh, the special school at that time, it was called a residential school for physically delicate children. It's called Conscripted. Way back before I became beyond legal, I was conscripted into a mode of separation ruled by parental ruefulness toward medical advice supporting flaky ideology anxiously waving goodbye a bond forever broken I pulled my fringe down over my eyes to go inside to hide from times I can't abide where I can't see where weakness shows, where horror grows, where a clock knows what should be done now and when it's not, or well, what? I, I took my hair to hide again, refused to go there within this regime where a clock ticks, where a hand flicks, where the cross school with no ticks there, yes, there, a memory of humiliation. Friday is pan fritters, Thursday is a barber's bowl. I look to tug my hair, avoid the chair, avoid the sight of hair falling all around the site where choice is not given, and I ask the barber not to cut my hair. I choose to fight the system, to shun the uniform, to deny the values of country, the hosts of Wolfpack and Scout Troop. I read the papers, survey the times, look into a mirror one last time, and I choose to grow my hair. But my hair refuses, my high lashes, eyebrows fall out, my chest hair won't grow, there is something holding me back, holding me down. I stare round and see a cross, a cross, I break, and the rules, the regulation, like a glass shatter, and all that matters is I find a way to grow my hair, but 
my hair won't grow, and I long so much for hair, for sideburn, moustache and beard, shoulder length, down the back hair, tied in a tail, resigned to a plait, and I'll go back home, but I won't stay there, the first and final institution. The they who won't let me grow my hair, I won't go there, and I won't work, and I won't engage with what they say, the words they bark, the commands that cleave the hair, for now I know just what it takes for me to grow my hair. Um, right, I've had a ponytail. Hair is a symbol, it's a symbol of my freedom. I wonder if any of you have symbols of your freedom. This next one's called uh, Here I Am. And this is a poem concerning hate crime. Um, right, having a stammer, right, having other impairments, having a diff, right, having a difference of one kind or another. Uh, my people see difference and people use it and so this is my challenge to people who have hated me and others like me here I am at last talking to the kids who may be the kids of kids who were kids when I was a kid what a joy it is to see you Remember then, way back when, when I was a kid, tormented by kids who may be the mums and dads of the kids before me now. Remember what fun you had as kids, having fun with the kids like me who struggle to walk or talk, and how happy it made you as a kid to have kids like me to vent your spite on. While well, the kids like me were almost free of kids like these who have mums and dads who were kids like these made happy when we were sad to hear the taunts of cruel words that made them glad because it's things like that that kids like these begat when they called and spat at kids like me and it's Kids like me who became mums and dads to have kids like me who understand if you say this and you say that, all you speak is hatred. And whilst you may be sated because kids like me agitated, there is now a law and is stated that we will be compensated for the words kids like you who will have kids like you if you keep on like you in old ways now outdated your insults must be rated by laws that stop your hatred hate crime what is the most important issues which we are still fighting which we still have the right to be angry about which we can be strong in the face of this one's called self-portrait right start with one about labels right and i said accept what labels you feel comfortable with however i don't still that other people give us labels. And I, like some of you, am here in defiance of medical science. I, like some of you, participate actively in spite of medical forecast. I, like some of you, have lived long enough to see off consultants' promises, science forecast promises. I, like some of you, am not a dumb deal, a word to be kept. I, like some of you, have stepped outside the ring they circled for us. I, like some of you, remain in a world they thought they had sealed off. Words 
rings, seals. I like some of you wrote a letter to myself. I kept a vow and sealed my fate with fire. I worked for 20 years as a coordinator of an advocacy project. Speaking up, speaking up is really important. It's important for you, it's important for us that your voice is heard. I sometimes write poems which exhort people to speak up. And so this one's called Not Shutting Up. What is the point of having a vice if you're going to be silent? Ask the blurb as if the word is the only sign we listen for. What's the point of having laws if we are going to be silenced, unreliable, not viable, the judgment of legal eagles? What's the point of living life if the lives we live are discounted, invalid like Khalid in another Isle Baron's war? What's the point of assessments if there's not going to be money on the table? It's all Babel, austerity, we're told is over. What's the point of anything at all if nothing is what we're living for? It's more than blurb, our only words eking out some kind of survival. What's the point of me being a poet if no audience turns up to listen, be no choice, use louder voice, reach out beyond depression? And I thank you for... I'm not actually sure about how much time I've taken so far. I'm trying to look at my clock. I notice 18.30 now in Highgate, London. It's, this is one of my um, kind of favourite poems. It's all about use of metaphor. Uh, and I use cows, cattle as metaphor or something much more important. S see if you can work it out. The trains has come, they said it would, the day the cows came home. So it was we stood and stared into the hopeful distance. Beyond the road, past the fence, into the verdant field, we saw the arses of the cows away in doubtful distance. We stood at home, we went to bed, tired out, we dreamt in colour, we heard the beast moving low yet, far away in distance. We shared a plate at our closed gate and wondered would it open, the animals seemed closer now, closer but not in distance. We threw the latch, we ventured out, pitchforks at the ready, they turned again and walked away, but we made up some distance. The cows, the cows, they're not our fowls. Still we cannot catch them. Obstinate, they won't give up, but they have made up more distance. We scratch our heads in mainstream schools. We learn the rules of herding. The bull and cows are closest yet, but somehow st still a distance. We have the skills and we've been paid, we know what we must do. We'll herd the cows and bring them home and there will be no distance. C civil rights, everybody. What do we want? Civil rights. Uh, thank you for your time. I hope to see you later on a live reading. Thank you.